let's build another boys. We have finally got some more Titanic. Um, we have received our first pack of four. So we've gone from two a month to four a month finally, which is good because we need to get moving with this thing. We've received nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Um, which is um, a little schizophrenic in what we're doing with this one because um, we're going to be working on uh, the hull, then we go into the engine, then we go into a funnel, then we go into the well deck, and we're, we're bounced around all over this thing. Um, but it's going to be fun, I'm sure. Uh, issue number nine, which I have here, um, is going to be attaching our two parts of hull together, which is very exciting. So it's a, a brace to go in the... Um, the top section of the hull on the let me think, starboard side. Um, and then we will be attaching the two pieces together. Uh, and that's all we're going to be doing this one. So there's not a ton to do, um, but enough to do, which is good that we're we're moving on. Um, if you haven't yet, please give us a like and uh, and subscribe if you haven't. Hit the uh, subscribe button. All the cool kids are doing it. Cost you nothing. Helps the channel massively. Very much appreciated. We're going to crack on with this. Hopefully... We should have a nice chunk of boat, a solid chunk of boat, to have a look at at the end. So let's get these parts up and let's get into it and let's get this done. Okay, so here we are with pack number nine. We've got our little cardboard box, which is standard. We have this piece here. Uh, this piece here. That's that's it. That's what we've got. So let's have a look at these parts first. There we go. So there's our opposing strip there. Here we have the brace piece that we're we'll using, uh, different bits and pieces, and two different types of screw. So we're going to bring up the parts from um, we have so far the hull, and we're going to attach these parts to it. So here is our section so far. I'm going to be using this new piece here, and it's going to attach to here, and we're going to be holding it in place with some AM screws. <laughs> He says, once he's figured out exactly how this fits on. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, fourth time's the charm. Um, because we're going into metal, we are going to be using just a touch of three and one oil on the heads of each one of these screws. And I'll show you how I do it. I mean, I've got a tiny amount in there. That's it. You know, I don't go mad. I don't want this slathered in oil. Um, and then we're just going to put these in. Now, they are on a very strange angle. They don't go straight down so you be aware of that as you're doing this because what you don't want to do is be forcing something they should go in fairly smooth i mean that one did um hopefully by the ends of this one we will have a freestanding piece of boat now i've seen people try and freestand it with varying degrees of success but we should at least have something we can pop the um pop the forecast on to and get a better look at what this is looking like and it would be nice to have a solid piece i mean that's kind of a pet peeve of mine with some of these part works. Um, is not having a solid solid foundation to build on. Which tends to happen sparingly, thank you. I mean, it's... With Iron Man, for example, we're just building lumps of body and throwing it in a box. We have no solid piece to build on. Um, and that's a little annoying. I'd like, I'd like a lump of Titanic that we just build and build and build up from. It uh, gives you something visual to what you're doing. It can also make storage a lot easier as well if it's one piece. Okay, so one more of these in there, and then that is done. I would imagine that when we get to superstructures, we're building that independently from the boat. I don't think we're going to build it straight onto the boat. Might be wrong. But that's done. So that bracket is in place. Uh, and this is it from the other side. That's how we're looking. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece here. And this is going to sit on top of here like so. I'm using the exact same AM screws. We are going to screw this into place. Let's get that lined up and let's get that done. I can already see this isn't going to want to go without a bit of a fight. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll play it by... So there's only there's only two screws going into this, which I find slightly bizarre because they've given me a lot of screws here, um, a lot of spares. So we'll definitely hang on to those because it seems too many to be spare, which would suggest I can want you to do them again 
use them for something else later. Just get them nice and tight in there. Yep. Now one more. And that section is done. And then we're going to be adding some bars. Now there's been some confusion with the bars because they look like they're going to clip into one side of the boat. They don't. It's almost like they're just there to to push as a spacer. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that. But it seems unusual. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Okay, so that's done. So there we are. That looks really rather lovely. Very simple. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel too secure, but that's because I mean again, it, it's only held in with two screws. You've got all this back here that's held in with nothing yet. It's not with anything yet. It will be, but yeah, it feels a lot. I mean, you can hear it. Yeah. So uh, there's that. Right. So now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to get the spacers. So let's get these spacers out. Pop this over there. Let's so pull this out here. Okie dokes. Right. So now we have two different spaces, two different sizes. So we have this long one, and then we have this stubbier one that's got a head on it. And it is asking us to place the stubbier one nearer to the front. So that should be going in there. And it asks us to put the longer one in here. And I can already feel that doesn't want to go. So that's going to need some persuasion. There we go. Bit of a wiggle straight in. So that's how we're now looking. Okay. So what's our next step? Okay, so now we're going to bring the boat together and we're going to, again with the AM screws. So what the bloody hell is this other bag of screws for? I don't know. Hmm. Please stand by. Used for anything in this stage, quite simply. They're used at a later stage, but they've given them us now. That always weirds me out when they do that. But, um, okay, that's what they've done. So now... Something tells me this isn't going to go smooth. We're going to offer these two pieces of the ship together and hopefully I should align, he says. <laughs> yeah. You know when you think something's going to go easy and then it goes, yeah, no, I don't think so. That's what we've got going on. Right. So that's not going to work that way. Let's try the other way. Okay. Gotcha! Right. So now again, using the AM screws, which I probably should have loaded up before trying to hold a giant piece of ship in my hands. There we go. Such a pro, it's unbelievable. Right, let's get one in and hold this in place. So we're going to get one in here. Now there will be screw covers for these. So as unsightly as they are, there will be covers. Okay, so that's one. And just such a three and one because I don't want oil stains all over this boat. Okay, let's get the second one in. Let's get this nice and tight because I don't want this, uh, you know, just collapse in the first iceberg it hits. Because that could be, you know, tragic. Alright, two more. Alright, well, that is tight. Okay, and then one more and we are done. Hmm. 
Hmm. Please stand by. <laughs> So I had a little difficulty with the screws. What was happening was they weren't biting. The reason why is because these spacers that are inside here, if they're just out by a little bit, it's not gonna it's not gonna tighten up. So you have to hold this thing bloody tight as you screw these in. Um, and then once you've got them in, it's worth going back over these ones to see if they go a little more as it because I mean I've got a few more turns on each to really tighten this thing up and it is solid now. Um, and it's looking really rather lovely. So make sure your spacers are down as far as they're gonna go. Um, the plus of these these spaces it, it it's pulling and pushing at the same time so you can see the very visible line that people were worried about on this side is starting to fade quite significantly and that's going to happen more as this thing gets sort of spread out and the, the the tension builds on this thing you can see from the front the join is looking very good particularly on that white part there uh, on the base of this thing again the join is looking great and we've got this nice solid piece of boat now um, and it feels good. Um, I'm going to put it into the little stand. And we'll see if we can get the forecastle on it. So have a, kind of a, a, a bit of a rough look at what it's going to look like. So there we have it. And um, yeah, so the stand works. I mean, it is, they do say in the magazine, uh, that can be a, it can be fit to the sport, but it's not stable at this point in there, right? And you can see where the forecastle fits like a glove in there. Really rather lovely. And um, this thing is going to be an absolute peach when it's done. It really is, because it is looking nice. Um, and that is all there is to do in stage nine. Now, we are going to have a chat um, about second officer Lightoller. Um, but yeah, this is this is a lovely looking thing. This is a lovely looking thing. Sorry, I always get taken aback by this thing because you look at it and you start to think, wow, this is going to be absolutely gorgeous when it's done. And it really is. This is, I'm loving this. I really am. I think this is absolutely beautiful and i can't wait to see this thing completed i really can't i think it's great for for its minor faults i think visually this thing is going to be absolutely stunning when it's done anyway that's enough of me rambling let's have a chat about second officer light toller and what's coming up next on the channel so there we are that's part nine complete and it's so nice to be back building this because uh the delay wasn't so bad but we do need to start moving on and it is nice that i have got the next three parts so those will be coming up very soon if you haven't yet, please give us a like, hit the subscribe button, it helps our channel massively. And it's nice having you here, it's great talking to you all, and it's, it's nice sharing in the comments with you. If you have any questions, you can uh, pop them in the comments, or you can get us at buildingwiththeboys at outlook.com. Now, those of you that were just here for the instructions, thanks for stopping by. Those of you that are swinging by for a history lesson as well, we're going to talk about Charles Lightoller, second officer, Charles Lightoller. Now... The man's life is huge, so that I couldn't possibly do it justice in the, the small amount of time I've got to talk to you about it. So we're going to focus mainly on what happened on the Titanic and a little bit of what happened after. Um, but my God, if someone was to ask you, what's a define a man? How do you define a man? Charles Lightoller is a man. This guy's life is huge. It, it's insane. And um, exemplary. I mean, he was a man of principle. He was a man of good morals. Um, and just, just a badass. I mean, that's, that's the best way I can describe him. Um, so, I mean, very briefly about Lytola. He was the second most senior officer to survive the sink of the Titanic. Well, he was the most senior officer to survive the sink of the Titanic. Um, he was born in 1874 in Chorley, Lancashire. And started with a rough life. His mother died very shortly after he was born from scarlet fever. Um, and his father emigrated to New Zealand when he was only 10 years old, leaving him in the care of other family members, aunts and uncles. At 13, not wanting to end up in the, the factories, um, he, uh, he, started working, he started working naval. And um, amazingly, I mean, again, I, ca I can't go into it all, but what he went through between 13 to 21, he was classed as a veteran seaman at 21. Because he went through some of the most insane stuff. I can't recommend reading up on Lytola enough. I really can't. Because it, it's nuts. Um, most people, I think, would have jacked in the, <laughs> the naval life by age 18 if you were Lytola. Because, man, did he see some stuff. But he was a veteran. He was a veteran by 21. Um, he joined the Titanic uh, two weeks before the sinking of it. 
I think it was part of the initial sea trial, so he joined it in Belfast. And um, we know the build-up to what happened, but what happened the night with Lightoller? Well, let's have a picture of him first. I will show you the pictures. Let's, let's have a picture of Lightoller, and you, you'll get an idea of who it is we're talking about. Helps to picture the man. Now you know who we're talking about. Okay, so on the night of the, the collision, um, Lightoller just finished duty. Um... And he ordered to watch out for ice and growlers, which is another name for the sort of tips of the icebergs, because they were aware that they were entering into fairly hazardous territory. Uh, he ordered Robert Hitchens, we all know about Robert Hitchens, uh, to check the fresh water supply below the waterline to check for freezing, because if it was freezing, it would show they were entering into very dangerous territory. He went to bed, um, and it was about an hour later he heard the collision. Um, so he went out on deck to check what it was, couldn't see anything. Um, so went back to his um, his quarters, and the reason why he said he went back to his quarters was because he thought, if there is anything, I can't see anything. If there is anything, it's better that I'm somewhere where they can find me. Uh, that was the right choice, because he was then shortly after he he remained awake, and he was then summoned to the bridge. And when he got there, uh, it was explained to him what had happened and what was happening. So Lytola took charge of the port side evacuation. Um, now. The order was women and children uh, to be evacuated. Lyotola took that literally, as in only women and children. So he refused to let men on the boats. So no boats, that he, he, only one guy got on a boat that um, Lyotola was in charge of the evacuation of. And that was only because he had maritime experience. And they were short of hands to, to you know, captain these boats. Um... Now, right or wrong, Lytola's plan makes sense. If you see it written down, Lytola's evacuation plan makes perfect sense. However, in that panic, um, it failed. It failed. That's the reality. Um, there was a concern of the davits on the Titanic that they would break as they were lowering the boats and the boats were too heavy. So the idea being if we filled this with men now, the davits are going to give way and the boats are going to plummet. They weren't going to. They were, they were reinforced. But they were basing this off past experience. And again, Lytol was a very experienced mariner. So he kind of knew his stuff. I mean, so it it was right to assume that could happen. Wrong, because he was wrong. But at the same time, his plan was to lower the boats once they were filled with women and children. And then at the bottom, load the, load the remaining seats with men once the boat had hit the water. That was the plan. It makes sense. So he ordered... Um, that the um, that the uh, the doors be open so that they could allow more men on, and he sent ten men to do it. Um, and those ten men were never seen again. Uh, we can assume they perished on the boat. They were drowned inside the boat, or whatever, or or just scarpered. We don't know. Those they were never seen again. Um, a lot of the uh, the boats, the second they hit the water, just took off. They they didn't wait to fill from the um from the water line. They just they just left. And um there's at least one incident that that we know ignored officers' command to turn around and come back. They hit the water and they went. Subsequently making the plan a failure. It makes sense. Lower the boat when it's it's got enough women and children in it, and then load men if there are any spaces at the bottom. It makes perfect sense, but again in the panic, it just didn't happen. So it's another reason why some of these lifeboats just left criminally undermanned. When he got to Lifeboat 2, uh, Lifeboat 2 already had um, 25 male passengers sat in it. And um, this this didn't sit well with Lytola at all. Uh, he wasn't happy about that. And he ordered them all out. Um, and they, they weren't going to get out. So he threatened them with his revolver. He, pulled his, he had a Webley. Pulled his revolver out and threatened them to get out. Now, the revolver wasn't loaded. So nobody was ever at risk of getting shot. But they didn't know that. And he said to him, get out of there, you damn cowards. I'd like to see every one of you overboard. Light taller, man. He's like, it's women and children. You ain't either. Get out of the boat. Um, and he continued to do this. Now, again, as we said, his his plan was, it makes logical sense, but in that, that kind of chaos, it failed. It failed badly. So there were some boats that only had 17 people in them when they were hitting the water. Um, but it, it's ultimately what, what happened. He stuck to women and children 
only rather than women and children first and that's that's where the uh that's where the problem happened as the boat went further and further down he tried to launch collapsible b um which which failed to launch it was the collapsibles were a nightmare um to actually get up um to launch to you'd have to wait for the boat to completely sink and sort of float them off and even then you'd have to turn them over and they were the, the collapsible bees weren't the collapsibles weren't really worth much um they were they were no good um when it got to a point where they evacuated as many as they possibly could and it became every man for himself lightola dived from the top of the officers quarters into the water below um and he described hitting the water as being the same as a thousand knives being driven into your body all at once yeah it's got to have sucked it's got to have sucked um lightola then got sucked under the water and got pinned against a grate and couldn't move uh, the suction was holding him there and it looked like that was it for Lytola he was going to die but then a hot air blast um, from the sinking ship fired through the uh, the grate and he was pinned to and literally shot him out of the water fired him to the surface um, he got pulled under again um, against more grates and managed to swim away from that um, it was at this point that Funnel B I believe it was um, broke off and hit the water, creating a wave, which managed to push Lytola away from the um, the suction of the boat. It was lucky. I mean, that funnel killed a lot of people. It didn't kill Lytola. It, it kind of saved him. Um, Lytola then found um, one of the collapsibles that was upturned in the water, with around about 30 survivors holding onto it by ropes. He managed to swim to it and get on it um, and climb up onto it. And um, took took captain, took charge of, of the vessel. And he taught the men how to shift their weight um, with the break of the water so the boat wouldn't capsize. Um, and led the, the sort of charge of the shouts of boat ahoy um, to, to, no, um, <laughs> to no success, unfortunately. No one came for them. Um, but they managed, they managed to stay afloat until the, um, the Carpathia was there to pick them up. Um, but again, Jesus, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a lot. It really is. I mean, I, I, all of this happened over the period of like 90 minutes as well, which is insane to think about it. I mean, Christ, you're in bed and the next minute you're, you know, you're in this chaos and you're diving into the water, you're, you're pinned under the water, you're shot out the water, you swim to crazy, 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 crazy. Um, but he did manage to, to, to keep uh, Clutch will be, uh, sorry, not Clutch will be, the, the Clutch will they were on um, upright long enough that they could be rescued. Um, and here is a picture of the uh, the surviving officers of the Titanic. Uh, the guy we're talking about, Lytola, is in the middle, standing up in the middle at the back. After Titanic, Lytola was um, key to both the, uh, the American and the British inquiries into what happened. Uh, and he was a staunch defender of White Star Line, um, of his employer. He was saying, you know, that they weren't to blame for this. Um, and he cited the things, the lack of binoculars and lifeboats, etc. And he did manage to channel positive change because the, the, the public's outcry of what had happened um, meant that his suggestions of lifeboat drills and having enough lifeboat capacity per head becoming maritime law. And he was very key in that. Shortly after this, World War One breaks out, and Lytola is a massive part of World War One. He was he, he was already still with White Star Line on the Oceanic, but the Oceanic had now been converted into an armed merchant uh, cruiser, and he was on that until it wrecked. It ran aground, and um, it wrecked in 1915, I believe. Um, he was the last man off. Again, just kind of true to his form, he was you know I'm, I'm the last one's boat, but not before he nicked the navigation clock as a souvenir. So, um, yeah, he was the last man off, and he, had, <laughs> he swiped the navigation clock as souvenir. Um, in 1915, uh, he was uh, aboard the Campania, and he remained there until he was put onto a torpedo ship, the, hey, I've got to get this right, the HMTB-117. Um, and it, he earned the Distinguished uh, Service Cross for uh, an incident where they engaged Zeppelin, and it was Zeppelin R31, and it was a, a very long battle. 
um, against the Zeppelin and they set a trap for it um, at the mouth of the Thames estuary and wait until it was it was directly overhead and open fire on it with tracer rings and um, eventually hitting the tail. Zeppelin had to turn back and he was um, he was acknowledged for this. And um, yeah, he, he, he got the Distinguished Service Cross. Hell of a guy. Um, he was then involved in the sinking of a U-boat. He was involved in the sinking of, of U-boat uh, 1110. And there was some controversy to this because um, it was reported that um, his ship did not respect the, um, the, the surrender of the, uh, the men on board. Now, Lytol has never really gone into detail about this, but um, by all accounts, they opened fire on unarmed men in the water with revolvers and machine guns. Um, what Lytol did say about it was that um, he never accepted his hands up in the air business. Um, and I can, it's not right, but I can understand why, because at the time of war, the there was seen something noble in one ship engaging another in, in battle. Um, the U-boats were seen as kind of sleazy warfare, like this, this silent assassin you don't see coming under the water sinking these merchant ships and it was he saw it as scummy he kind of said so as much that it's kind of like it's dirty underhand um and they would have been responsible for the deaths of a lot of people including friends and colleagues of his so i can understand the red mist descending it doesn't make it okay but i can understand what happened um and they did by all accounts they opened fire on the men in the water um and uh yeah it's um it, it's it's a blemish on his um on his legacy but people did very strange things during the war they did and um i don't think i think under the circumstances i don't think we can hold i don't think we can hold it against him too much i can understand doesn't make it okay but i can understand why it happened um in world war two well after world war one he um he tried his hand at, at multiple things. He sort of moved away from from um, the mariner lifestyle. And he tried his hand at multiple things. He was a land prospector. He was a chicken farmer at one point. And he was living a more simple life. I think he'd earned it at this point. He'd, he'd gone through some stuff. Um, and then something remarkable happened. He, um, he, he owned a boat. He never walked away from it completely. He bought a boat called, uh, I want to say it's the Sundowner. Here's a picture of it. You can still see this boat. It's preserved, um, but it's it still exists. But here's here's the little boat that he owned. 1939, before World War II had fully took hold, in that little boat, he was commissioned um, to do uh, intelligence work on the German coastline, uh, take pictures, gather information about their um their naval capabilities and it was it was completely successful except um he got caught one night by a german vessel and to get away he pretended he was drunk so he had this whole this whole thing planned out where he acted like he'd been drinking he was out fish he just drifted off course and they believed him and they let him go um he's rock and roll uh the following year in 1940 he was part of uh, the rescue from Dunkirk, uh, where he was one of the little ships. So I, I'm not going to go into the whole history of Dunkirk, but um, our men were stranded over in Dunkirk, and anybody with a, a vessel, a fishing vessel that could that could make it across the channel and pick these boys up and bring them home, was encouraged to do so. Lightoller immediately gets the boat. So in the Sundowner with his son Roger. They, uh, they cross the channel to pick up boys and bring them home. Um, his son, his his other son that had actually died, um, who was part of the RAF, had taught him a technique for avoiding um, fire because they did come under fire on the way back. And uh, a stucker had basically locked on to the sundowner. So they stood out on deck um, and waited and waited and waited until this thing made its, uh, made its move. And as it dropped the bomb... They could shout where to go and it was hard to port so the wheel was spun the boat would turn and the bomb narrowly missed them 
But um, again, I mean, it, it's balls of steel in an unarmed vessel to cross that water. Every person that took part in this. And this is kind of where the, the, the thing of bulldog spirit comes from. The fact these are just fishermen or, or retired um, Navy officers just got in these little boats and went and did what they had to do to get these boys home is remarkable. And Lightoller was, was one of them. Um, you know, it, it's they were sitting ducks as they were coming back with, you've got the Luftwaffe just bombing the living shit out of them from the air and they're, they're in these little boats completely un, unarmed. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Um, there is so much more to Lytola's story, so much more, more than I could possibly go into on this, and I have just touched on bits. So I'm sure it'll be, I think you'll find that he did this. Um, he did. There's so much more. I Honestly, it is fascinating reading. How there hasn't been a movie made about this man is anyone's guess. But um, a humongous life, a massive, massive life. And um, yeah, God bless him. God bless him. He was he was one of the best of us. Really was. Um, remarkable. It really is. If you get the chance to read about Lightola, I, I strongly advise you go and do it because it is um it's just an amazing story. Anyway, that's it for issue nine. Um issue ten is gonna be coming very soon because I've got it, so we're gonna be doing it. We're we're gonna be going through it. Uh issue ten, we have got more components for the engine, and I believe we got a bit of keel as well, so that's going to be interesting. We're also going to have a chat on that one as well. We're going to we're, we're going to be going to the movies. We're off to the movies, so we're going to be watching all of the Titanic movies, every single one that's ever been made that we have access to. We're going to watch the whole lot, and we're going to have a chart of which ones the best, which ones the worst, which ones are worth time, which ones ain't. I know I'm going to be watching a lot of garbage. I do this so you don't have to, <laughs> but we will compile a good list of these are the ones you got to see. Um, so we're going to the movies and we're going to be watching A Night to Remember. So we'll be talking all about A Night to Remember in the next episode, uh, along with the build. If you haven't yet, please give us a like. If you've enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button. You'll get notifications of when every new Titanic video comes up. Loads more on the channel as well. It's not just Titanic. We've got all kinds of stuff. Um, good stuff. And we love having you here. So uh, it's very much appreciated. A quick hello to all of our new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing, and uh, we got some good stuff coming up for you. We'll catch you in issue 10, and again, the world where you can be anything at all. Be Lightola, <laughs> and we'll see you next time.